uh, as I was staff in the water resource, uh, I was the only water resource person at the time. Um, went on to SOU and I retired from SOU in 2001. Uh, but I'm still active in environmental and water resource issues. In fact, we're uh, working with the COG and Southern Water Conservation District on a water manager's forum May 7th uh, over at the uh, Southern Water Conservation District office, just like we did last year, uh, given our uh, water uh, situation, especially snowpack. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm a member of and involved in um, the Southern Oregon Climate Action Now group. And one of the things that we would really like to do uh, is to reach out to agencies such as your own uh, and the general public and organizations to uh, basically get together um, uh, folks that want to learn more about what our climate trends situation is. It's we're, we're trying to avoid situations like global warming and things like that. That's just too hot button. But um, we want to increase the public awareness of our current conditions. Share some success stories about what you and other entities are actually doing that reduces the factors that lead to uh, the disturbing trends that we're dealing with. Uh, and to facilitate additional actions among those that are gathered. So we're planning a two-day, it's a pretty ambitious conference here in Medford at the end of the common. Um, and you know, expecting several hundred folks, uh, we have an invitation into the governor. And the idea here is um, sharing where we are success stories, and to facilitate those who attend to um, take on or add to their actions that are now reducing uh, the impact on our, these disturbing trends. The trends like we are increase, having increased temperature. Uh, the National Weather Service said we had the last two years were the warmest on record. Um, and you can look it up to um, like decades, the recent decades are as, uh, as warm as been recorded also. We have a disturbing decrease in snowpack. Um, and you know, you know, not just the fact that Mount Ashland struggled recreationally, but uh, Ashland has um, a strong dependence on snowpack melt and the irrigation system. The irrigation districts are dependent on snowpack. Um, uh, ecological changes um, it's making it harder and harder to have stream habitat support um, and efforts at restoring salmon populations. Uh, recreational opportunities are decreasing. It's harder for Jackson County to get the boat ramps off the Hyatt and Howard Prairie, um, and not to mention the skiing and rafting issues relating to water. Uh, we can look around and see changes in agricultural productivity decisions. The orchards giving way to warm temperature type vineyards. Um, <coughs> potential increase in fire danger, um, not just because we normally live in an arid situation in this valley, an arid meaning we have more evaporation potential than we have rainfall, um, but that uh, successive years that we've had, more like four or five, has decreased the uh, soil moisture to the point where our forests are threatened. 
Um, and not to mention the fact we have some health issues if we ever have fires, air quality decreases, and we have an increasing number of people who are retired and come to our region because, frankly, it's a nice place to live. So, um, our goal is to have several hundred attendees become more familiar with these trends and to help decide how to best address these problems individually or in conjunction with local and regional agencies such as those that you represent. Um, we are asking that you consider joining us at the uh, forum, October 13 and 14. Uh, contribute to your, uh, contribute your concerns at this event and participate in solving and helping to develop solutions to the, the problems that come out of the conference. We're not asking for money. Um, the, the, obviously we need sponsorship for something this ambitious, but um, at this point we're looking for a broad range of endorsements for the event bringing people together. Um, it's time to bring folks together to talk about this. And um, the sponsorships uh, from uh, any or all of your organizations would be more than welcome. Uh, so can representatives, of course, can come to your individual board meetings uh, and answer questions or give a short presentation similar to what I'm doing today. Um, and. Um, October it seems, on the one hand, pretty far away, and we are still in the formative stage of this effort. We have some idea of how the agenda is going together. The out rough outline, I think, was in your packet. But we'd also like to hear from you on any ideas you might have to uh, make this not just the planning effort, but the event itself better. What would you do um, if you were helping to organize a communication tool bringing people together? Um, and, you know, obviously in many cases we're building on your actions already. Medford has, you know, solar panels and lead platinum buildings and uh, agriculture is adjusting their irrigation systems, and uh, you've got transportation planning coordinated right here through the Council of Governments that addresses and encourages, you know, pedestrian and bicycling and alternative transportation. Uh, you're working to reduce your energy use in many of the cities. Um, so it's not like we're starting to address our footprint on the earth from scratch, a lot of things are happening right now. So uh, I guess I'd just like to open it up if you have any suggestions on the kinds of things that might make this event better, more useful to you, and provide more information to our citizens who live in our region. And by the way, the region we're talking about is Crater Lake to Gold Beach. We're talking about the entire watershed. So um, it's not just the Bear Creek Valley or Jackson Josephine County. It's broader than that because we are all, frankly, connected. So ideas, do you have any ideas or thoughts that might benefit um, or make this approach better? Or do you have any concerns that you want to express at this point? Eric? Yes. And I've known you for a while. I'm not sure if you remember me, but way back a long time ago. Uh, anyway, so I, I know what you've done for, for a lot of years oh, and stuff. Um, I think I participated in something like this a few years ago. And um, what I'm concerned about is, <clears throat> is we do a dance with this global change. And because it's highly politicized. And and, the, and mostly what I hear is finger pointing at fossil fuels and things like this. Instead of the, real, uh, the realization that change happens. 
change happened before people were here, change will always happen. That's just the nature of things. Um, other, what, what's happening right now is, is it's real in what we see on a daily basis as far as uh, the drought and weather conditions and things like that. Um, and what I want to see is the practical things that we can do. I know a lot of people are adjusting, like you said, for the irrigation. We're, we're looking at making sure that we're conservative with our water. And crops are being changed. Uh, people are, are changing how they landscape their yards and things. They are, they are reacting to a reality. And as long as we talk in realities, I think it's a really good thing. I mean, it's just like we have had horrendous fires in this area. One of the really things we've always thought over is how do you take care of those, I mean, what do you do to prevent them? And going in and cleaning up the underbrush so, so that the, the fires don't get so super hot that you really take out your forest. And, and not locking up the forest so we can't go in and do those types of things and making sure that we do the, the proper amount of taking care of what we have and be appreciative of that. Okay. Uh, I think what I see is, is making sure that we are respectful of one another's opinions and respectful of the fact that there are real changes out there and not just saying that it's I mean, I'm, I'm, it's human beings, the bad old rotten human beings that are doing all of this. I, because I don't think so. I mean, I remember learning stuff in sixth grade about uh, sunspots and sun stuff and all kinds of stuff and what happened way back thousands and thousands of years ago before people were supposed to be even here. So what I want to see is the practical stuff of yes, we are doing a lot of things to help where we're at now. And I want to keep doing those practical things and looking at it in a practical ma manner without the blame stuff. Mm -hmm. no, I, you understand where I'm coming I, from? Oh, absolutely. I, I agree. And uh, it's no, it doesn't make any sense to, to you know, look in the past and blame somebody. Uh, or look at the future and blame somebody. Yeah. And, but on the other hand, we have, a, we have lots of activities that frankly, are just good stewards of the earth. Correct. Okay? And if we can share those both at the jurisdictional level, um, cities might say, all right, maybe on our next PUD, uh, we'll have lots of south-facing roofs. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's practical. Uh, that's well, solar. Cost what, for solar is going down. Well, so. one of the things that this fellow has done really good, uh, and, and I've lived here for 36 years, 38 years now, and I remember how bad it was in Valley and, oh, how, yeah. and how much particulates were in the air, because a lot of us used wood stoves, and we've changed over from wood stoves, we went to pellets, we went to other things, and it really did make a difference. Now, the other thing that made a difference is we don't have the logging industry, so we don't have that. Either. We don't have the wigwams, we don't have all of that kind of stuff. But looking at practical things that have made a difference and realizing we have made a lot of good progress. We have put uh, devices on our vehicles that cut down on the emissions. We have done a lot of things that have shown that we are good stewards. And making sure that we continue to go forward of learning of the inventive things that us as human beings can do creatively to uh, make a positive impact as well, because we have made a positive impact as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we get, uh, I don't think we speak about that as much in knowing of all the technological advances that we have made that they have been positive. <coughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's cool. fine. Eric, have you asked the uh, various cities to participate in this? and Josephine County and Jackson County uh, to participate? And if so, what has been their response? Okay, well this is our first foray into uh, connecting with individual cities and um, 
Jackson and the Jackson <coughs> County, Jefferson County. Uh, the idea was to give you all sort of a heads up that we will be coming to you. Uh, I have talked with Mayor Wheeler, for example, in Medford, and um, they'll probably do one of their study sessions closer to the event. Uh, so uh, we are prepared to actually meet with the folks that would like us to come to your various board meetings and uh, address you uh, on this subject. But as we talked with Mike about how best to do this, we thought um, a presentation to you as elected officials and representatives, if you can um, bring this concept back to your individual boards and say, uh, would you entertain a presentation on this particular summit? It's not a, it's not a support of SOCAN and, and all the other things that are going on with various environmental groups. It's really a support of this event, the two-day event. And we are prepared to come to the, you know, your jurisdictions, but we thought, and with um, Mike's input, uh, coming to this board meeting, asking for some thoughts from you, and letting you know that we are available to come to you, uh, and we'd be asking for your endorsement at some point more formally. So, does that answer your question, Bill? Yeah, I, I hope that, uh, that that's, that's done, and I hope that we have learned the various reactions of the various cities and the counties as to whether or not they're willing to participate. And if so, to what extent they're okay. willing to participate. I'd be really interested in knowing those things. Oh, I think that's a, that's a, a logical request. Maybe we can keep the board informed through Mike, if you could just send him a memo. I sent you a memo about how we're progressing, and then you can just send it in the packet. Okay. Yes, Roy? Um, how soon will you be available to come to, say, Grants Pass uh, oh, City Council workshop? Let us know. Oh, my gosh. I will, I will try and schedule you sometime between um, end of May and middle of June. You're on. Yes, um, Eric's affiliation with SOCAN um, is, is not connected to his former affiliation with Southern Oregon University. Um, I want to make that clear. Um, but I also would like to say that um, Eric had asked SOU um, to support um, this event, and we have agreed to support the event. Um, that we, we want to see discussion, we want to see uh, an educational um, opportunity for people to share. We're doing a lot of things at the university that I'm sure we would want to be sharing with folks. Um, at the same time, I uh, told him we cannot support anything that comes out of this in an advocacy manner. So we're, we're not taking sides. Anything that comes from this that, that we're here to want to go forward to a, to a legislative body or to a city, Southern Oregon University is, is not going to be involved in that sort of um, endeavor. So it's the conference only for our involvement, but we're very supportive of that. If you look at this purely as an educational opportunity, then... Yeah. That's exactly, <coughs> exactly what it is. And we hope that it's dynamic enough that people who attend and then uh, go away from it better informed, decide to take on their own actions within their own realm of uh, activity. Question, um, if you're asking for support for your event and um, educational opportunity, um, so are, is your presentation going to be a balance of, of science and SOCAN's slant on environmentalism, or is it just going to be SOCAN's presentation? Okay. Is there a difference there? It's, yes, there is a difference. Um, it's not uh, a SOCAN. SOCAN is playing more of a facilitator role in this. Mm -hmm. We have speakers who are going to be well versed in uh, forestry, water resources, recreation, um, the transportation, describing what the situation is now as they see it, um, any concerns they may have on disturbing trends, as I mentioned. Um, then there's going to be presenters such as uh, Mayor Eugene coming down. They've been very proactive in addressing issues uh, at, in that city. Um, 
there's going to be uh, an opportunity for breakout sessions where um, in those same areas I just talked about, transportation, recreation, construction, um, they will sequester themselves for an hour and come up with any ideas they think might work. Um, and you know, this would be the end of the second day. And we, that, those are then described with folks. These are the kinds of things we'd like to do. As far as a follow-up, then we would hope within a month or two from this conference, representatives of each of those breakout areas would come together and say, uh, how are we going to actually implement this? Uh, what can we do uh, in implementation? Uh, to carry it forward. We don't want to have an educational conference and a bunch of information put out there and then it's basically forgotten after the meeting's over. Uh, when we did this with the Council of Governments on Water Resources in the early 1990s, we ended up with the 2050 Committee and the Bear Creek Watershed Council carrying on the situation with that crisis back then. We want, I'd like to see the same kind of thing happen here that we are in fact the catalyst for further action. Um, so as far as a threat of presentations, um, we think we've got uh, most of those covered, but would um, frankly be open to suggestions on <coughs> broadening that. And uh, we don't have the agenda firmed up yet. We don't have all the speakers confirmed. but. Um, any, any any additional thoughts, uh, Commissioner? No, I'm just trying to figure out what you're presenting and uh, whether it's duplication, which we already have. We have so much uh, in transportation and parks and recreation and planning and implementation and how that is blended with what already is in existence. Um, it's a little bit like the council though. You all are doing lots of things and running your various jurisdictions. But the COG, every month, brings people together to share what you're doing. And you're absolutely right. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of positive things in this region. Bringing people together so that can be shared might result in, hopefully will result in, uh, new ideas for collaboration. Uh, ODOT and um, alternative transportation is something that you're already dealing with. Are there other opportunities like that you know, with the Greenway? And so I'm, I'm, we're hoping that as people listen to what everybody else is doing, that new ideas come out. Other questions? By you? I think we have a good basis here. I have Wait, one yeah. more question of Eric. I noticed one of your um, speak, uh, topics is going to be assert, asserting public trust rights to secure our common future. What, is, what, do you, what does that look like? Or do I need to hear it from these folks that are going to speak on it? Um, well, there's I, I, details on that would be part of our guest mm -hmm. speaker you know, scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> The, the concept of having uh, a connection, for example, between an urban citizen, their elected officials, and action. This approach is going to take individuals to take care of their own footprint. Their real reliance on and input to you as elected officials as you make a decision within a jurisdiction, city, county, uh, or special district. And then statewide, <coughs> and national, and global. If you can have um, citizens who actually believe that they can come to you <coughs> and make a suggestion, state their case, there's a trust involved there. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that someone more um, versed in that than me uh, will be there to answer your question on that one. So it's trust in the, um, as trust, not trust as in a, a land conservative trust or something like that. 
Correct. Okay. Other thoughts? Thank you very much, Eric. Okay. I really appreciate your time. I, I appreciate your time um, allowing me to do this. Um, <laughs> You know, this gives us a chance to look at a long-term type of approach um, that I think is going to be necessary for a task this broad. Moving on to item six, uh, receivables funding. Yeah, well, I have a couple of things that are yeah. not on this. Um, one is that uh, you are probably fortunate enough to not know what the OMB <laughs> super circular is. But it's a it's a uh, it's a joining of eight different circulars that have governed administrative requirements, cost principles, and audit requirements for any recipients of federal awards. Um, it uh, we used to be governed under A eighty seven, for example, and now that's part of this. Um, this uh, this was done in December of twenty thirteen, and it's taken a while for. For really it to roll out and for people to get familiar with it, we we purchased a, a webinar seat uh, for May seventh and between eleven and twelve thirty here at the Cog, and we're just inviting any anyone from our member jurisdictions or our, our member entities if they have any interest at all in these guidelines, just come on down for free. And if we have enough people, we'll probably just be sitting in this room. But if you have an indirect rate, if you have some way of, of tracking your, your costs, any kind of cost structure, if you have any questions about audit requirements or the federal regs under this new super circular, um, it, it probably would be worth somebody's time. 